Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk more about the Wittig reaction, including using uh, the Wittig reaction to synthesize specific alkenes. So let's take this alkene as an example. If we were interested in synthesizing this alkene through a Wittig reaction, we would really be interested in forming this carbon-carbon double bond that I put my squiggly line through. I'm going to use a retrochemical arrow here. So again, this, is, this arrow implies that I know what we're going to be breaking uh, this up into. And I want to draw out my carbon skeleton pieces, but I'm not. So I'm, you know, but I'm not necessarily going to commit at the moment. Uh, though one part of this needs to be the, the carbonyl group, and one part needs to be the. Uh, Fittigreed or, or phosphorus illid. So I'm actually going to just pro propose both possible combinations at the moment, and we are going to, to, to think about which variation might be better. So here's one combination. I made the, the left hand part of the molecule the carbonyl group, and the right hand part of the molecule uh, the, the Wittig reagent. And, and, and if you didn't see how I, I came to this conclusion, uh, what, what I encourage you to do, actually, it's like, let's take our, our molecule. And, and I'm going to walk through the steps for the other version. So, so let's, let's like stretch this thing out. And we're going to erase the carbon-carbon double bond. And we're going to draw in two new double bonds. And I actually want to move these apart just a little bit. Okay. One of these double bonds ends in the oxygen for the, the carbonyl group. And the other one ends in the phosphorus, the triphenyl phosphorus group. And there they are. So I've got uh, my, my aldehyde in this case and, and a different phosphorus in it. Here's the thing, here is the thing. Either of these combination of ketone and illid in the first case, illid and aldehyde in the second case will react just fine together to get the, the alkene shown. But one of these illids is easier to produce, and that's going to be the variation that behaves the best. And so my choice, and I didn't necessarily do this on purpose, uh, is, is the first one. And that's because One illid is easier to produce. And all right, so honestly, this illid, let's go look at them. This illid, uh, and if you watch the if you haven't watched the video on the synthesis of the illids, you should you should go watch that. This illid comes from an alkyl halide that looks like this, and it's reacted with triphenylphosphine in an SN2 reaction. The other illid comes from, you know, from bromo or chlorocyclohexane. And again, it would require an SN2 reaction to get this started. And you know, this is a primary substrate and this is a secondary substrate. And primary substrates are better for SN2 reactions. And so, yeah, we're going to pick this combination uh, because of that. So then sort of in general, you're given a, a situation where you feel like, oh, this is, this is pretty attractable. So let's say if you're given a situation where, you know, you need to, to prepare this compound, again, there are two choices but I would encourage you to make the aldehyde or ketone your more substituted choice and your phosphorus illid your less substituted choice. And then there are, is in fact uh, a phosphorus illid with just one carbon on it. And so that's what it looks like. Let's show the carbon label. Um, here we go. Um, and you might you say, well, wait a minute, there's more things on the ketone or aldehyde, but ketone or aldehyde is planar at that carbon. And so there's a clear approach from above or below. 
It's unlike the SN2, which has to squeeze in to the back side on, a, on an SP2 hybridized carbon. And I'm just going to do one, one more kind of example. Let's go up here. And uh, we're going to do... You know, just it, there's one other sort of thing that is worth mentioning. Right? If the molecule has a carbon, another carbonyl group like an ester or something attached to one of the alkenes, then that's a pretty clear indication that the ilid actually has to be on that side and, and not on the other side. Because these two look pretty similar in substitution pattern on either side. But as I shared in my video on illid synthesis, uh, these illids, uh, where you've got a, a neighboring carbonyl group, are stabilized, and so they're they're especially uh, good phosphorus illids for these kinds of reactions. Uh, and in and in this case, I actually drew one uh, where, where where this compound has. Uh, a trans alkene, uh, and you may wonder about stereochemistry. So I'm just gonna just do a real quick, real quick talk about stereochemistry. Um, So let's say I have this aldehyde and some generic phosphorus illid. It's actually important for me to be generic at the moment. Uh, these two can react together to form uh, an alkene here. Uh, it has stereochemistry here. But there's also a cis or, or a Z isomer. And then it tends to happen, and this is good. That's the trans isomer, the thermodynamic isomer. We know from way back that trans alkenes are a little bit more stable than cis alkenes. But the, uh, those, cis product is the kinetic product. Uh, and so the types of things that tend to favor uh, kinetic versus thermodynamic control are going to work here with the, the exception that for that for when R is electron donating, uh, the high temp required for to obtain thermodynamic is really high. And the kinetic product forms at room temperature or, or sometimes even at zero degrees Celsius. So that, that's, that's some trouble. When R is electron withdrawing, uh, we get a different... When R is electron withdrawing, the high temperature needed for thermo can be as low as room temperature. Uh, and that's a really big difference. And, and one of the reasons why someone might want to go for the stabilized illids that use electron withdrawing groups. Let me drag all of this up here. Okay. So, and, there, and, and this is a gross oversimplification of the stereochemistry. There's actually a lot of different way, other ways you can manipulate stereochemistry in these reactions. But this is one... Uh, one one way that that matches up with our thermodynamic and kinetic understanding of other reactions. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the horner wadsworth emmons reaction as a modification of the Wittig using a slightly different phosphorus illid, um, and that that creates something that's easier to purify. Thank you for watching.